home build and this week uh, we started filming a brake upgrade video. Realized I need bearings and stuff for them as well. So guess I'm not doing that today. So um, today I think we'll be gonna be installing a stereo. All right, so in a contrast to every other video I've done on the Beetle so far, let's start by putting the Beetle back on the ground. Okay, this is what I'm currently dealing with in the stereo stake. So this old crusty head unit is, uh, for starters, they've bashed the hole into the dash, which is horrible. Um, and it's just crusty, it doesn't work properly. It's uh, time to go. So with that mess of a head unit, um, I went down to Super Cheap and they hooked me up with a, um, uh, a nice new Kenwood head unit and uh, set of speakers. Although I think a lot of these um, major car stereo manufacturers are really missing a, uh, missing a trick because there is really nothing at an affordable level that is a retro style head unit. I mean, it would be really nice to have something that is suiting old cars. Because let's face it, the only people who are changing stereo head units anymore are people with old cars. And generally, a lot of them are gonna be really old cars. And unless you wanna spend a lot of money like the one I put in my 911, there's just no reasonable budget price point of a old style stereo. So guys, you're missing a market here. You need to build some stuff for the old cars. Classic looking stereos, that's what we want. Anyway, let's move ahead. Nice and cozy in here. So um, as you can see here, there is a real mess of just rubbish behind here. The wiring is just a complete and utter disaster. So um, I'm going to attempt to play around and see what I can do. But I think the first thing I gotta do is get this, um, the vent out of the way, and then um, I'll get access to the back of the stereo and we'll see what we got from there and see if I can tidy some of this up. I suppose one good thing about having a dodgy stereo install is that you can generally just, this is not even mounted in at all. So I can just grab it and pull it out. Now, whoever installed this stereo really didn't like this car. They just, they just mangled it. They just really bashed away to try and make a spot to fit in. They really did not care at all. So, um, I do care what it looks like. So for starters, before I even install anything, I need to do a bit of panel beating and actually get this dash back straight again. All right, I need a bit more space to work here. I'm gonna to have to cut this out a little bit larger than what it was. What I'm using, I'm using the um, the mounting bucket from the uh, the new stereo. I assume this was an old style stereo, and I would have actually preferred to keep an old stereo in here and just hide like a um, a Bluetooth setup behind the dash or something, um, and just have a blank plate here. But uh, that's not the case. I've got this mess to deal with, and I don't have the old stereo, so um, the new one is the go. And first things first, so I need to mount this up and cut it out. So. Um, Steering wheel's gonna come off, give me some room. So I'm gonna use my bucket from my new car stereo and I'm gonna draw it out onto a piece of cardboard and then cut that piece of cardboard out and then I can use that as a template to hold it up here.
Well, that is looking a lot neater. Um, it still needs a bit of work around the edge and I might actually do a little bit of uh, body filler and stuff just to make it just right. I want it to be nice and neat and so it just doesn't look like a dog's breakfast. Alright, that's looking much better. I've sanded it back all the way around the edges. The uh, stereo now fits, it's all nice and tidy. So now I'm just gonna get a little bit of body filler out. I've, uh, I've roughed this whole area up. And I'm just going to try and smooth it out just that little bit, just get it nice and flat all the way around so that um, when I eventually get to repainting the dash, it's all gonna look nice and clean and tidy. Now it's time to start tackling this wiring mess. And uh, this goes back to the first things I ever did on playing with cars is installing car stereos. Installing car stereos, it looks like a big mess of wires, but most of it is pretty easy to, uh, to tackle. So this is the existing uh, wiring block out of the, uh, the old car stereo. Red is usually power, bl black is usually the ground. Because you've got a yellow as well. Yellow is often the direct power coming straight from the battery. I've got my uh, test light set up. If I uh, just check it there, that means it's uh, got power all the time. The red is the power from the accessory. Then you've got a bunch of these other colored wires and they're usually in pairs. You've got uh, two greens, one straight green, one with a stripe, two purples, two grays, two whites. Those ones are the speaker wires. Gray and white are the fronts and green and purple are the rears from memory. In this case, this is all coming out and all getting redone anyway. So um, let's just start stripping some of the back and see what we got. So I've got this just basically wired up, just the power for now, and I'm just gonna double check it. We have power, all right, so now it's time to um, start wiring everything else. And I definitely think I'm gonna have to check a color because uh, this is changing colors. I just want it plain and boring, please. Okay, so I've just put a coat of primer on the dash. It's looking a whole lot better than it was before. So now I'm gonna move on and start looking at putting in some speakers. Now, I wanna put the speakers into the doors down here. So um, let's just pull the door trim off and see what we can work with. Basically, there's not enough depth in the bottom here to fit a speaker, but how's this? There is actually a six inch speaker hole already in the door skin. So these speakers will fit in there just nicely. So now I need to transfer the hole onto my door trim itself and mount the speakers in. Now I'm gonna work on hiding the speakers a bit better when I get my new door panel cover things. But for now, I'm just gonna mount them straight into the door and um, yeah, they'll be visible and that's fine. Okay, my next challenge is to try and work out how to transfer that hole onto this door card. And um, what I've come up with is, um, I'm gonna try using a piece of paper and dirty finger and see if I can make sort of a, a template of the, um, the area and then transfer that onto my door card and see if that works.
All right, that's an issue. That's not gonna work. But um, what I can do is, I'm sure it'll work later, because um, my big secret plan to make them look better is actually to mount them behind the door trim and just have small holes punched into the trim itself so that they, uh, they come through. I've seen guys in the 911s do that and it looks much nicer. It just, you don't see a speaker at all. It's just hidden, it's just there. This, uh, this grill is quite big and chunky, so I'm just gonna take it off and uh, run without a grill for the time being and I'm sure it should then still work. Yes. Moving on, let's go and do the other side and uh, wrap this up. So we have radio, it works. I'm gonna to have to look through and change these colors because they really irritate me. I don't want pink, purple, bright blue, yellow, whatever. Just just white will do, just, just as subtle as possible. But uh, now I've got this installed, my next challenge is, this actually has a Bluetooth microphone. And I've gotta try and find a place to mount this that's nice and subtle and um, hidden. that is all in and it's looking nice and neat and tidy much much neater than it did before the panel beating is all done I managed to hide that um, microphone for the uh, Bluetooth speaker up uh, right, right up here it sort of clips in up hides in with the black of the uh, headliner and I hid the cable down behind the window rubber in the corner here so it's nice and hidden and it disappears down through the heater tube but um, I will have to tune it all in and get it all working properly on another day because I'm out of time. So that means it's time for Fun Facts with Mrs. Jeff. Hey guys, Australia's first encounter with Volkswagen was in 1942. After the decisive victory of Al Alamein, which ended the German expansion into Africa, a number of Kubelwagens were captured. The Aussies used them behind the lines until 1943 when they were pulled out and the vehicles were left behind. As the Aussies were fighting the Japanese in Southeast Asia, they did not fight in Western Europe and didn't encounter the Germans in their Volkswagens again until after the war. Alright guys, that's it for another day. After that slow start, starting to work on the brakes and then realised I didn't have the stuff so switching over to working on the stereo and then um, I'm quite happy with how the dash looks now after fixing that horrible hack job. It's now looking reasonably flat and even and um, the stereo seems to work pretty well. Um, I'm quite happy. So uh, that's another thing ticked off the box and the car's still on the road, which is a good thing because it's a rolling resto. So um, as always, if you want to help the channel out, head down to the link in the description and you can go to the store and you can pick up some of the new Beetle shirts. I haven't got mine yet, but uh, they're, uh, they're there in the store. Um, and uh, as always, please like and subscribe to Home Built by Jeff and you can follow me at Facebook and Instagram at the same place. See you guys. L L L L L L main L L main 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 jury of L L main L L main of L L main. I'm so excited I got it stopped.